Hey, what's going on, YouTube? CJ back in the flesh. Gonna do a different style update for episode 18 of the Be Easy Reef. That is what we're gonna call it from now on. Now, the last update, we went over um, a mini tank crash, so to speak, and got a lot of great feedback, you know, a lot of uh, good energy, as I expected, from fellow hobbyists. Uh, some saying went too fast, some saying, you know, they had issues with it before, you know, all the expected responses, but there was one response that really uh, changed everything as far as my perspective is what caused the crash? What was the crash from? So I'm gonna clean the tank up a little bit, point and shoot style, try to do this in one take, uh, but I wanna give you guys a quick look at the tank and where we are at as far as the bounce back, as far as uh, after the crash, you know, what the pools are doing. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about what the real issue was that started this problem um, because unfortunately I misdiagnosed the issue. So I misdiagnosed, I was treating the tank for a hair algae issue when in actuality, it was a bacterial issue. Let me track down my track down my uh, flipper float. So I get this glass clean for you guys and give you guys a close look at the tank. But it ended up being a bacterial issue called Lingbaya, I believe is what it's called. Now I'm gonna put a couple screenshots up of the information I found on it and a couple of the links, which ended up being a rabbit hole of information uh, with everyone who has fought this issue before. Now, Lingbaya is a form of cyanobacteria that closely resembles hair algae, but the color is the thing. So it's actually brown. It's brown, it's flowy. Um, fish actually pick at it, which kind of throws you off as far as what it actually is. And, and it kind of, feels and looks like algae. Like if you try to grab it, it actually, you can actually grab it and pull it off. Uh, it kind of disintegrates in your hands a little bit, but it is a form of bacteria. So the treatment I did using the fluconazole was focused on the wrong thing. And the fact that all of the lingbaya died off in the tank when I did the fluconazole also kind of made you think that it was algae as well. I'm thinking it was some kind of side effect. So um, what happened during the tank crash, what I believe what happened was the nutrients bottoming out may have been a factor with creating the cyano, the, the uh, cyanobacteria, as you guys know, no nutrients does cause cyano. And this form of cyano, I'm not sure how it got in the tank. Um, you know, there's been theories I've read that it's coming from RODI water, bad RODI water. You know, I've read theories that it's coming from um, bacteria in the bottle. You know, how sterile are these bacteria in the bottle that we're adding? Are they actually introducing, you know, bad bacteria as well? Is that part of the issue? So it kind of makes you, kind of makes you wonder uh, what the cause of it was. Misdiagnosing the issue uh, led to a mass die-off in the tank of this nuisance, you know, ling bio algae looking stuff, which also, by the way, is toxic, very toxic. And it all died at once in the tank, which made the water toxic. And the fact that I was treating the tank with fluconazole prevented me from scrubbing, prevented me from using uh, carbon, prevented me from doing water changes per the instructions of the fluconazole. So I basically, killed this cyano, left the toxins in the tank, misdiagnosing it, actually ended up leading to bigger issues in the tank. And knowing what I know now about how toxic that stuff is, I'm really glad I didn't lose any livestock in the process as well. So why are we making this video? You know, the first thing is just letting you guys know that there was a misdiagnosis and the second thing is, I'm actually noticing it start to come back in the tank. So 
you guys look on camera as I'm cleaning all this dive times off the glass, you'll see that the rocks are starting to get more of the fuzz look to them that I had the first time. Now, first time this happened, that fuzz wasn't a concern. I'm thinking it's just the rock maturing, you know, ugly phases, ugly stages of the tank, as everyone says. And then that fuzz slowly but surely turned into one fourth inch, you know, half an inch long pieces of hair flowing in the flow of the MP40s, you know, growing on the MP40s themselves, growing on the back wall of the tank. And then, you know, me thinking that I'm helping the situation, cleaning the black wall and it's spreading through the tank, which made it worse. So I'm a little nervous to do that again. So what I'm going to do is try to treat this with one of the three or four methods that I found reading that article on Reef to Reef. I've seen some uh, people recommend using a form of antibiotic. Um, I'm not really too keen on putting an antibiotic in the tank for this, at least not as my first method of choice because of the other effects that antibiotics have in your system. Um, another method of fixing it is going to be using peroxide. I've seen people mention taking out the rock, using peroxide to uh, treat the rock outside the tank. I've also seen people mention using peroxide in the tank, dosing the tank itself. I think one one milliliter per gallon or some kind of some kind of calculation. I'll have to look it up again. But peroxide is another method of choice to. Uh, Try to treat this so uh, the other option that I've seen is going to be using bacteria uh, meaning Mycobacter 7 um, bacteria or Mycobacter clean there's also two options that I've seen people use uh, with varying levels of success for all of these different ways of trying to fight this um, there's not one magic bullet I've seen that gets rid of it for sure you know, I've also seen cases where people have broken down tanks from it. So uh, Ling Baya is going to be the new demon that I'm going to fight with on my return to the hobby. Um, something that never seen before, never had before, never dealt with before. But I'm going to be happy to document this for you guys as far as what happens with this in the tank. So which one of those methods am I going to go with? You guys may be wondering well i'm gonna try the method i have on hand readily available on the shelf already and that is going to be the microbacter clean and the microbacter seven so uh you know done some homework spoke to fellows in the hobby and i'm gonna do a treatment of each bacteria bi-weekly meaning one week i'm gonna do microbacter seven the next week we're gonna do micro back to clean and over time you know still doing my water changes and see if that uh that helps this issue you know during those dosing of course turning off the skimmer and the uh, uv to give adequate time for bacteria to populate the tank definitely going to be something i do as well so as you guys can see this is how the rock looks now if you remember the last video Rock was completely clear. Um, I went through all stages of the fluconazole treatment. Now the rock had the long, fuzzy stuff on it. Then it ended up going, you know, completely bare and looking like normal live rock. And now we are getting the fuzziness returning again, especially on the higher parts of the rock, like this one, getting the higher light, and then the peak getting this brown fuzzy looking stuff once again as i said before this is how it started before it grew into the long stuff so uh but also at that time i was dealing with low nutrients bottoming out and all that which i'm not having at this point so you know after changing over to the normal reef salt um and not carbon dosing the tank 
I've been able to keep nutrients in the system, you know, around 10 to 15 parts per million nitrate phosphates have been detectable 0 0.2, 0 0.3, you know, I've kind of be within that range as far as phosphates. So I know I have nutrients in the tank, but I still don't know why I'm getting this happening. So I'm going to give you guys a look at what is going on in the system. Now, as you guys can tell, corals that have survived are doing pretty good. Uh, we have polyp extension starting to show back up on the SPS that survived, uh, including Bird of Paradise, uh, the stylo on the back, this digitata polyp extension, also starting to show a few growth tips that were not there before. Bacillopore, this stylo, I think it's like a tricolor stylo back there. So, I mean, as far as the cores that survived, for the most part, they're doing okay. Uh, still waiting on these hammers to recover and still waiting on my anemone to recover, which honestly is not looking too good. So hopefully I don't end up losing that guy. Uh, Bobo Coral, Duncan, Lobos, a lot of those things are doing good. Even the GSP is opening again. So like I said, it's not a total loss by any means, but I do not feel that the battle is over for sure. So I just want to kind of give you guys a quick point and shoot style update. I think if I do these, it makes it a little easier to get them out without having to edit them too much. But overall, this is the tank. So I'm interested in knowing uh, what do you guys think as far as this Lingbaya bacteria issue in the system? Have you guys ever had this before? Is this something that uh, you've heard of before? Have you had it and defeated it? Have you had it and it, you know, defeated you? What do you know about it? Because search YouTube for it, you don't find many videos. You know, search online, you find a few articles on it, but I don't think it's really getting the coverage that it needs. So I'm gonna do my best to document this with you all as far as what I'm doing to resolve it, um, including using the Microbacter 7, and using the microbacter cure and you know in succession uh bi-weekly to see if that helps minimize the issues but man like i said once again welcome back to the hobby cj you know just when you thought it was going to be easy we have a demon in the tank <laughs> but i think it's a good point to wrap it up uh excuse the colors in the video i don't think the gel filter and you know me moving around point and shoot style is probably the best idea color wise but i just want to give you guys some raw uncut footage so that way we can continue documenting the build and you know documenting the journey which is the ultimate goal of my channel and making sure that i keep it real with you all and you know hopefully help you avoid any issues that happen in my system so you guys know what time it is you guys can like comment subscribe you guys keep doing what y'all do. Y'all be easy and happy reefing. Peace.